of the opponent's perspective in the eyes of the opponent um little mini session since so game six of seven we're playing as black here and key points to take away from this one um not a bad opening again just nice steady basic stalwart opening but then it's that realization uh, it's a general theme throughout the uh, majority of the games. It's that gut feeling of searching for that better move. Yeah, so we'll get to the case in point in this particular game. So at the minute in time, happy with the position so far. So then, this particular manoeuvre here, the F5 push pawn. Took a while over the move, thinking, well, don't want them all owning the space around my king, so I decided to pump for that. But in essence, it should have been one move down, which is hitting the head of the snake, which is 
part of our mantra. You know, we always say hit the head of the snake because you know it's going to fall. So that pawn chain that they've got going here, pretty simple. Fairly comfortable with that knowledge that, you know, we could have just hit the head of the snake. So that gave us a disadvantage. Um, so now they can attack our bishop. So we're kind of on the back foot now just from that one move. We were okay up until this point. And as we mentioned in probably the first or second game where we were going backwards, that didn't bode well for us. Yeah, it's okay going backwards if you're going for a positive type of position play. But in the games that we've played where we were going backwards, our position was shot. We didn't really then enhance any better positions from moving backwards. So we bring the queen up now, looking to see whether or not there's a spot. There's a spot here. Um, if the pawn does move, we are attacking this pawn because it's got no protection. You're thinking they're probably going to actually come and defend. And on in hindsight, bringing the queen to this spot, I don't believe is the right move. Again, it goes back down to what we were talking about, that gut feeling. Got to really listen to the gut feeling and choose the better moves. So they did push down, and the better move is actually taking the pawn. Yep, taking the pawn, rather than going greedy munching for a check on the king, in my eyes, I mean, there's no nugatory checks on the king, but there's better checks on the king. And that wasn't a better check because they can just go for the exchange, whereas we've We've made a positive out of this from the opponent actually defending the pawn. We can now just take. Yeah, and what do they do? They haven't got a dark square bishop to attack our queen. So if they take back, then we're taking back on a positive. I don't think we'll take with the queen, obviously. But it improves our position on the board. Yeah, so they take. And then from there, we can then go in and put a check on the king feels a lot better we've got rid of the excess waste and baggage in front of our king basically equalize the pawns in front of our king so there's no pawn majorities simple chess then we can go in and then they can go for the exchange don't have to go for the exchange you know we can bring the queen across and put a check on the king here but knowing me i would take i want to i want to know how many points i'm going to lose from taking so we take and it's back to that same situation. So it's really not about even exchanging the queen. So we've done all that beautiful work to get rid of the pawns there. And if we went for the exchange, it's basically saying, well, you've wasted all that valuable um, movement. So that is something to think about because in our mantra, we exchange queens when it's of benefit to us. More times out of 10, it is benefit to us. But I think we need to step it up a little bit and maybe not exchange the queens only issue i have is with that is when i see players playing not exchanging the queen with me they tend to end up getting their king trapped queen trapped sorry and um, because they're constantly moving it around so i don't want to fall into that based off of my own experience many years ago when i got my queen trapped over the board i was winning and it just got trapped it was unbelievable so i'm kind of scarred from that and moving the queen around too much might not work. But I think if we are bringing the queen here with the check, if the queen then does come here, the rook can take, and that should be all right. So the king's going to have to move. It's only got one space to move if they're not looking for the trade. I don't think there's anything else they can do. They can't block here, can they? Yeah, they can't block can't move queen can but it gets taken so yeah it's only one move the knight's not being able to block so it's only one move and then we can hit the queen with the rook so that's pretty straightforward there's no check on the king but it's pressure in a higher piece so it's probably gonna have to move back or does it attack the queen no there's nothing supporting nothing supporting Nothing supporting, only places there. So that they're, they're like only moves. They're like only moves. 
Well, it's not finished, is it? That's the thing. Not really getting anything extra. You could put a check on the king, but then the bishop defends and the rook is under threat from the queen. I suppose you could come here protecting the rook, but then the rook comes and attacks. I suppose you can take, take. That's a bit messy, isn't it? And so we're in this position. I'm just interested as to um, computer saying C5. I'm, I'm not thinking of C5 when I've got all my pieces up here ready to rock and roll. That's like a sitting back move and going, oh, okay, we've done this work and now let's focus on pawns on the other side of the board. I'm never seeing that. I'm sorry. Not if I've got the war going on up here. I'm looking at seeing if I can do something. Hmm. Interesting. So if we did do this, I wonder how far it's going to drop. So it doesn't drop too much, but we're expecting the bishop to come here. Yeah, just to stop that. And then we said bringing the queen here, support him. And then the rook comes here. Or we could move the rook, but the bishop's on the queen at the minute. No other check. So we said bringing it here. And then the rook coming here like this. And then if we go for an exchange, does that mess everything up? Maybe the queen doesn't want to exchange. Maybe the bishop takes. Okay, fair enough. It's not happy with the bishop taking. Takes with the queen. Could take with the knight even. Okay, let's see if taking with the knight works better. So taking with the queen or the knight work better for them. So say they take with the knight because they don't want to exchange the queens. Okay, so it's, it gives us something to work with. Right, so that didn't happen. We came with the queen across in the middle. Captured, captured. And then brought the rook up, attacking the pawn. So at this point in time, I could feel the rhythm of the game was not really um, working for us. We're kind of backward. Look at the bishop, the knight. Um, nothing major at this moment, you know, it's, but it's small potatoes in terms of, well, I'm not developed, not got my pieces working together as a team. So I'm trying to blast open the centre to make some space for the white square bishop and the knight as well. And so they're not giving us time to breathe, but it's giving us better in terms of performance on the eval bar so we take grab we're trying desperately to make space but i know full well tempo wise <coughs> our pieces are kind of weak the weekly position so now i'm having to use my bishop as a pawn just to stop the rook from coming down and attacking the pawns there and then they start mobilizing the knight and we're trying to make him rose. I mean, that was I think that was a wasted move there. We talked about this afterwards. Um, the knight move was a bit of a wasted move. Uh, sh that shouldn't have been done. And the computer's saying, just bring the bishop back here, basically attacking this pawn. But, I mean, it's just going to come here. So, really, it's like... I'm kind of in a little bit of a trap. I'm in a little bit of a net where my pieces really aren't functioning at all. So I'm trying to do something, seeing whether or not they were asleep, but they weren't asleep. So that was a bit of a waste of a move. And then they captured. And at this point, basically, I, I resigned. So it's really using that gut feel to get rid of choosing the incorrect manoeuvres. That's all it is, basically. When you're doing well in your opening, you know, you're opening up quite nicely. Position feels good. There's always a shift. And this is why playing a higher rated player, getting their kind of perspective on the movements and the strategies and the planning. That's the whole idea behind these friendly exercises is to actually observe the player. It's not really looking at my play. It's looking at how they take advantage of um, these actual games.